Hey everyone, Cricket Star Boy Tyra Odin back with another video. Hope you guys are all well and in very good health. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe to it for more content and updates. So as you all can see, the ICC Men's T20 World Cup has begun. And before I get into all of that, I hope you all have been doing well when I was away. As you all may know, last month I was busy co-hosting the Special Olympics opening ceremony and also the closing ceremony which was a couple of weeks ago then KKR won the IPL and I made a deal with the entire team promising them that I'll do things for them and also next month I'll be starting the TV course at Star Broadcasting where I did both the beginners and advanced radio course which was wonderful then this month I'll be hosting the standard fives graduation at at Park Mirrors and then next month I'm supposed to host some event but I'm trying to get info on that at this time but with all that said let's get down to T20 World Cup business so the World Cup bowled off Saturday and let me tell you all something the matches have so far there has been drama and not much hype as you would expect but nevertheless the first few matches in my view there wasn't much hype leading up into the World Cup, although all the hype has been mostly about the India-Pakistan clash, which is happening this Sunday at Nassau County, New York City, which everybody's been talking about. But we need to talk about more of the associated nations because some of the sides have been giving the bigger nations a run for their money. Like, for example, Papua New Guinea. They almost shocked West Indies, last, the co-host, last week Sunday. But in the end, thanks to Rosslyn Chase's 48 and Andrew Russell's firing 20-something runs, got them over the line by five wickets at Providence. But before that, the US, the other co-hosts, opened up the tournament against Canada and they defeated them by seven wickets where they chased down 194 thanks to Aaron Jones' half century. Then... West Indies had a major scare against Papua New Guinea, but in the end overcame that scare to defeat the, 20, the Oceanian side by five wickets at Providence. Then match number three saw the first Super Over of the competition involving Namibia and Oman, in which Namibia won. Then, of course, South Africa played Sri Lanka where the Proteas had to fight hard to defeat Sri Lanka after bowling them out with 77 on a wicket. That, was me that wasn't that was all that good for the batters, but it was something similar to like what we have seen on South African pitches and even in Western Australia, for example, Poof. Then after that, there was another game where Afghanistan hammered newcomers Uman, I beg your pardon, Uganda, the, the Southern African nation. And then yesterday, in fact, day before, there was the washout involving Scotland and England where Scotland nearly gave the English a scare, but thankfully the rain saved the pumps. And also, I did mention the other game that took place then Netherlands played Nepal in front of a sellout crowd in Dallas, Texas, which was mainly of Nepalese supporters. And in Nepal's first appearance since the 2014 edition, uh, they made 105 runs and the Dutch chased it down in the 19th over to score its first two points of the campaign. Then yesterday, India hammered Ireland by nine wickets in which Rohit Sharma scored a half century and Hardy Pandya took three wickets for 26 and Jasper Boomer two for nine, I believe. And that was a dominant performance from Team India. Then last night, Uman nearly gave Australia a scare big time, but in the end, Australia, they won easily at Bridgetown in Barbados. And, but the one thriller that witnessed last night was Uganda winning its first ever T20 World Cup match. They defeated Papua New Guinea by three wickets in the 19th over. But the talk of the town has to be today in this video. That's why I decided to make it because I haven't been making content for a little while. 
I've been following the T20 World Cup and all the other cricket that's been happening. But the talk of the town today, the whole world is, has been talking about it within the last 12 to 24 hours, or should I say the last 10 to 12 hours now. And that is the United States of America upsetting Pakistan. And this is giving me vibes of 2007 World Cup where the Irish, who, where Ireland, who in their first tournament appearance knocked out in Zaman Mulhaq's men. Then the next day, Bob Woodman was found dead in his hotel room in Kingston, Jamaica. And it was a whole commerce. And they had ruled out homicide in that one, I remembered. But this one was indeed the biggest upset in the history of T20 international cricket. Why I'm saying it's the biggest upset because no one would have ever had thought that the US would have defeated the Pakistani team. So coming into this match, the US, fresh off defeating Canada, won the toss and elected to bowl first. Now this match, by the way, went to the Super Bowl with the US won by five runs. But let me give you a little background. The US sent Pakistan in and, in, and when the Pakistanis were batting, they looked shaky throughout the first 10 overs, but they were steady true through its captain Baba Azam, who contributed 44 runs and Shadab Khan 40 runs, along with valuable late hitting from Iftikhar Ahmed and Shaheen Shah Afridi, the former captain, helping the men in green post a total of 159 for 7 from 20 overs. Nush Hush. Now, Pakistan made 7 for 159 from 20 overs. And for me, you have you would have had to say that Pakistan were 20 to 30 runs short in their turn at the crease. But in reply, Aaron Jones, who we spoke about earlier, who smashed a 40 ball on defeated 94 in the first match, once again starred for the red, white and blue when he helped stretch the game into the one over eliminator with another vital knock of 36 of 26 and they ended up finishing on 159 for three from its 20 overs forcing the game into overtime now pakistan from the start of the super over they panicked right through when their much experienced fast bowler Mohammed Amir believe it or not conceded 18 runs which included 7 runs of wide deliveries now for me I think Pakistan made a blunder by asking Mohammed Amir and Imar Basim to come out of retirement that's one of my opinions and the reason why I'm saying they were brought out of retirement it has to do with experience from the Caribbean Premier League now they did not know that they were playing first round matches in the US. And for me, two other youngsters should have gotten an opportunity, like for example, Wasim Jr. and even Mohamed Harris, who was unfortunately left out because of a whole set of comments made by the team management. But the team management is mainly responsible for the defeat, and so was the captain, Baba Azam, who made a lot of blunders in that first match. Amir conceded 18 runs in that over, <coughs> excuse me, when he should have gone for either Nasim Shah or Shaheen Shah Fridi. Now, Harris Ralph costed Pakistan the match because he was very expensive, unfortunately, and fresh coming back from injury too, although he took a wicket, and so did Nasim. But on the whole, Pakistan, with the bat, with the ball, and in the field, they were very sloppy all the way through. From conceding 18 runs in the Super Over to coming 5 runs short finishing on 13 and losing the match, it was totally pathetic. And with the victory, the US are one victory are all but almost certain of reaching the Super 8s for the first time in history, in T20 World Cup history. This is their first appearance because they automatically qualified alongside West Indies as co-hosts for the competition. They are one victory away from reaching the Super 8, which is the second round of the tournament. As for the Pakistanis, their next game is a very hard one against India. And they must win all of its remaining games to have a chance of qualifying through. Because India already off to a terrific start. Their net run rate is positive 3 point something. 
and the US they're at the top of the table believe it or not that's what I have to say anyways I do not see Pakistan doing like what Lionel Messi's Argentina football team did when they won the World Cup a couple of years ago but to avoid first round exit aka embarrassment they'll have to bring the A game all the way through and for me I believe when they play India in the next match Imab Wasim needs to come back in the team once he is fit and replace Azam Khan who in my view is out of form right now although he's been getting a lot of flack on social media of late because of all the weight problem oh, that is a whole set of back and all by itself but I'm not going to body shame him he's a good player but his pr the issue with him is his fitness that is costing Pakistan matches and fitness is a most important part of the game overall that's all I have to say for this video. I hope you guys liked it. If you do, like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Tomorrow's match involves Canada versus Ireland at Nassau County. And there are two more games in the evening time which I will talk about tomorrow or Saturday, God's willing. So until then folks, be good, be cool and I love you all. Thank you.